<laughs> Alright, lift your Bible, hold it up. If you're reading from your phone, lift it up real high. This is my Bible. I believe what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. A doer, not just a hearer. Today, I will learn from God's word. And my life will not be the same. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Uh, the past three weeks, we've been talking about our redemption in Christ. Amen. And we discovered that there are four specific areas that we are redeemed uh, from. Uh, we discovered that we are redeemed from sickness. And uh, we discovered that sickness is not a blessing from God. And that God does not use sickness to correct, guide, or teach his children. He uses his word. We also discovered that poverty is not a blessing from God, and we are redeemed from it. How many of you know that when you are poor, it doesn't bless God? That's right. And it also doesn't bless us. You know, because we don't like to lend money all the time. Amen? <laughs> and I mean, it doesn't bless God when you're not answering your phone. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Uh, we are also redeemed from sin and the dominion of sin. Amen? And we are also today going to discover that we are redeemed from the curse. Amen. Let's go to Galatians chapter number 3 from verse 13 to 14. After today's service, you will not attend another generational curses uh, deliverance uh, service again in your life. You will discover that you don't have generational curses. Uh, in actuality, you have generational blessings. Amen. Amen. And uh, you will discover that uh, Christ has already redeemed you from the curse. Galatians chapter number 3 verse 13 says, Christ hath, that word H-A-T-H, hath, has a past tense predisposition. What does that mean? That means it speaks of things that have already taken place. Amen? So Christ is not trying to redeem you. He has already redeemed you from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That, this is the reason why Jesus Christ uh, redeemed you from the curse, so that the blessing of Abraham, someone say the blessing. The, blessing. the reason he redeemed you from the curse was that the blessing might do something. And he tells you what it should do, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus the Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Jesus Christ redeemed you. That word redeemed means to buy back or to purchase. And what would typically happen in the olden times is that if you owed someone money and you couldn't pay for it, they would come and take you and your children and make you work for it. Or you would become what was known as a slave. Okay, And Jesus Christ came to all of us. We were slaves to sin. We were slaves to poverty. We were slaves to sickness. And we were slaves to the curse. And he came to the pawn shop of Satan, if you will, and paid the price to buy our freedom from the curse. So he redeemed us from the curse. And what I like in particular about this is that not only did he snatch us from, you know, Satan's pawn shop, he empowered us. So he didn't just make us free and left us. You know, there is this thing that they did in the U.S. Uh, in the 1800s, I believe, called the Emancipation Proclamation, where they made slaves free. But most of the slaves uh, who were made free did not go on to live free lives because th there was no empowerment. You know, okay, you say I'm free, are you going to give me a job after this? How am I going to feed my children? So there was no empowerment. But with this, Jesus bought our freedom from the curse and gave us the blessing or empowered us to live in prosperity. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go now to... Proverbs chapter number 10, verse 22. And let's find out what the blessing is. This concept of the blessing, it is so powerful. It is so strong. Once you learn it, I mean, we live in a, in a, in a, on the other side of the world where, you know, when someone sneezes, what do we say? You. you know, bless you. When you are a, a baby father in South Africa, what do they call you? A bless. We're throwing around this word, <laughs> the blesser, right? <laughs> 
Unless you've been hiding under a rock, right? <laughs> so we're throwing this word around and treating it cheaply. But if you look at the life and the lives of the people in the word of God, they reverenced the concept of the blessing. Mm. Jacob had to go through uh, uh, so much manipulation just to get his father to give him the blessing over Esau. Because he understood, if I can have the blessing, then I have the whole world. That's all I need. All I need is this force called the blessing. You know, on this side of the world, we throw it around. You know, someone sneezes, you know, bless you. But this thing carries more weight than that. And I'm about to reveal it to you. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse 22. It says, the blessing, what? The, the blessing of the Lord. And I want you to notice the blessing is not the car. The blessing is not the house. The blessing is the supernatural ability of God that is bestowed upon an individual that does this. It makes rich. Amen. Did you see it? Yes. This is not Pastor T talking. This is the Bible speaking. How many of you not believe in the Bible? Shout the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. That's the book for me. I stand alone. I stand alone. On the word of God. On the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. That's what it is. Amen. I'm dropping some bars, right? <laughs> That's a Sunday school song. <laughs> Give it to me in the NIV. I want you to see this. Proverbs 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord does what? I didn't hear that. I did not hear that. So the blessing of the Lord is not the wealth, but the blessing of the Lord is the power that will bring wealth. And watch what else it does. It adds no sorrow with it. He adds no trouble to it. There are two ways to get wealth. There is your way. You know, I'd rather do it my way. No, th that's not going to cut it. You know why? Because if you bring it according to your own strength, you're going to have to keep it according to your own strength. Yeah. That's right. I mean, there are people who have wealth and a lot of sorrow. That's not the blessing. When the blessing brings wealth, he adds no sorrow to it. So you'll be able to sleep at night. There's lots of people who have wealth but can't sleep at night because they're worried about what their stocks are doing while they're sleeping. <laughs> a lot of people who have a lot of money but they can't keep a good meal down because they, you know, are suspicious of people around them. They're not sure if you're there because you really genuinely like them or you're there because of the money. Amen. So there's a lot of trouble that came with the wealth. But when you're in the blessing... When you get prospered by the blessing, it makes rich. He brings wealth and adds no sorrow to it. Mm, that's good. Amen. There are lots of people with five cars, <laughs> different colors, one for each uh, working day of the week. <laughs> and they just prosper. 36 bedrooms with about 14 bathrooms <laughs> in Waterfall Estate. <laughs> But they also have a tracker on their missus's car sure. <laughs> because they want to be checking wherever she's going. Sure. So they have wealth, but it came with what? Sure. When the blessing brings wealth, it adds no sorrow with it. Amen? Amen. Someone shout, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Therefore, Therefore, I will be rich. I will be rich. It will bring wealth. And no sorrow with it. So if you're in the blessing, what should happen naturally? You should become wealthy. You don't work hard at it. Amen? I said amen. amen. But PT, you don't understand my situation. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know my educational level. It didn't say anything about that. Did you see that? Yeah. It just said, man, if you have the blessing, if you have the blessing, it will make you rich. It will bring wealth and it will add no sorrow with it. And this is where we are as God's children. God has given us the blessing. God has redeemed us from the curse. A few years ago, my wife would tell you, uh, a pastor called me. And he said, hey, uh, Tafara, I've been trying to get uh, a hold of you. In fact, he had tried it several times and couldn't. Phone my wife, said, I need to speak with your husband urgently. And then he finally got a hold of me. And he said, hey, Tafara, I just called to say, man, I had a dream last night. And I was at your funeral. This was about three years ago. 
I was at your funeral. You know, so, um, you know, I'm going to call upon all my intercessors in the church, and we are going to be praying for you. And he asked me, he said, so what are you going to be doing? I said, man, right now, I'm going to be going to Nando's. <laughs> and then after I go to Nando's, I'll get some lunch, and then I'll come back and, you know, do the rest of my work that I was supposed to do, and I'll go home, and I'll just continue living my life. And he said, but aren't you going to do something? I said, yeah, because, you know, th this thing that you have given me prompts for a response in fear. Yep. And I never respond in fear. Yep. Because what I was supposed to do was to say, oh, man, he, he dreamt of me dying. Oh, man, I should find some friends. We should go on a fast so we can pray. What am I doing? I'm responding in fear. I'm, not, I'm, I'm nothing in faith. But the Bible is very clear in Hebrews 11, verse 6. He who comes to God must believe. In other words, when you decide to come to God, it's an imperative that you must have faith. Yeah. Not only must you believe, you must believe that God is, in other words, God exists. And that is a rewarder of they that were. What? Diligently seek him. And guess what? I had a promise in the blessing that said in Psalm 91 verse 16, with long life he will satisfy me and not only that and show me his salvation. Amen. So I had nothing to worry about. In fact, the funeral he was talking about was the death of my limitations. Amen. Death of me. Yes. Not the death of me. Amen. But here's the problem. In the church, blessed people, yeah. people who are in the light, are threatened by darkness. Listen, if you, there is no way darkness can overwhelm light. Yeah. No way. Let's go to Numbers, chapter number 23. Some of you don't believe this. Oh, oh man, this is going to be good. In fact, let's uh, take a little detour and pass through Psalms 1. From verse 1 to 3. Watch what it says. It says, blessed is the man. Someone shout, I am that man. I am that man. Women too. Shout, I am that man. <laughs> There's no gender in the spirit. Amen. Shout, I am that dude. Amen. <laughs> blessed is the man. That walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord or in the word of God. And in his law do they meditate day and night. Not in the problems, yeah. in the law, in the word. And he shall be the blessed man, right? That's the subject of the story here. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. That brings forth fruit in his season. Someone shout, I am fruitful. I am fruitful. In my job, in my, job. In, my business, in my business, in my relationships, my relationships. because I have the blessing. His leaves shall also not wither, and whatsoever uh, it doeth, amen. what will happen to it? it Tell your neighbor, whatsoever I do prospers. Whatsoever I do prospers. Tell them, whatsoever I touch is blessed. Tell them whatsoever I touch turns to gold. Tell them if I touch you, you will be prosperous. Numbers, chapter number 23. This is Balaam and Balak. You remember the story? And Balaam, Balak had hired Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel for him. And he said this when he sent his servants to go and uh, speak to Balaam. He said, Balak, we heard of your track record yeah. that whatsoever you curse is cursed. And whatsoever you bless is blessed. So he wasn't a Mickey Mouse light, you know, weight wizard. <laughs> That's right. He was the high priest of the witches, spiritual uh, wizards, okay? <laughs> He was at a, the advanced, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and he had a track record yeah. to go with it. Yeah. So he said, I want you to come and curse these people for me. And this is what happened. He went and he tried to curse them. And when he did the first time, he couldn't do it. He opened his mouth, pronounced a blessing. Someone shout, that's me. That's me. See, when they play hating on you and stuff like that. And I like the attitude of the children of Israel. They didn't get distracted by a dog barking tied to the tree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. That's good. Yeah, man. That's good. 
So they let him back. Yeah. He's tied to the tree. Yeah. See, the problem with the church is that a lot of us get distracted by the dog barking tied to the tree. You know, some prophet will come to you and say, man, I had a dream of you dying, and then you respond to that. Man, the children of Israel, oh, man, they were just busy doing their own thing, going to work the next day, man, just hanging out with their family. And meanwhile, at the back, at, at the ranch, the man is trying to curse them. But guess what? The blessing is working in the background. Because that's, that's what the blessing does. Amen. You're not going to have to fight your own battles. No. Just let the blessing work for you. Amen. Amen. Good word. They didn't respond to Balak. They probably heard, right? In the morning news, uh, Balaam, uh, uh, Balak has hired Balaam to curse you people. Just said, okay, next page. Arsenal won the FA Cup. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't pay attention to that. And Wenger is not signing a new goal. Okay, Numbers, <laughs> chapter 23, verse 8. Listen what uh, uh, Balaam said, Balak. Listen what he said, Balaam, after he tried to curse and he couldn't curse. Here's what he said. He said, how shall I curse those whom God has not cursed? Did God curse you? No. no. So you are uncursable. Someone shout, I'm uncursable. He says, how can, I, how can I curse those whom God has not cursed? It's not going to work. The curse won't stick. Here's something else I want you to see. The curse and the blessing are mutually exclusive. They cannot coexist. That's right. You know, when you go to this uh, generational curses seminar, they make it seem like you are 60% blessed and the 40% is the curse. So we need to push the equilibrium <laughs> and get to 100. No, these two forces cannot, someone say cannot, yeah. they cannot coexist. Yeah. So hunt your neighbor and ask him, which is it going to be? Are you blessed or are you cursed? Are you in the light? Or in... And get an answer. I'm blessed. So if you are blessed, there is no generational curses. Because these two cannot coexist. Wow, wow, wow. That's good. The blessing will fight for you. Yeah. The empowerment to prosper. Verse 19. Let's go to verse 19. He says, God is not a man that he should lie. If you go to Hebrews, the Bible is very specific. He says, for it is impossible for God to lie. You know what that means? That means even if God wanted to lie, God can't lie because it's impossible for God to lie. In other words, if God walked into this building today, what time is it? Oh, I have 10 more minutes to preach. 19 past 11? Sunday morning, right? If God walks in here and he says, hey, Faith Hill Church, how are you doing on this beautiful Tuesday night? Did you know it would be foolish for me to say, God... It's Sunday morning. No, the Sunday morning has to change That's right. and become a Tuesday night because God cannot lie. Amen. Amen. That's right. So if God says you are the head and not the tail, it will be foolish for you to say, Sir, have you checked my bank account lately? <laughs> if he says you are the healed, it will be foolish for you to say, Lord, did you check the doctor's report? No, the doctor's report has to change to line up with a God who cannot lie. Because God can't lie. He just, this word is the absolute truth. It's the absolute truth. That's why there is no, you know, uh, third edition, reviewed edition of the Bible. The only thing you can get is a different translation. Because this is the truth. Amen. He says God is not a man that he should lie. No, a son of man that he should repent or change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Wow. Or has he spoken and will he not make it good and fulfill it? Behold, I have received his command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot Someone shout, I am, blessed. I am blessed. Now look at your neighbor and say, there ain't nothing you can do about it. 
Now, I want you to say this, because I know sometimes clergy get a big head and when they manipulate people. Now, shout, I am blessed. blessed. Now, look at the pastor and say, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's what it is. It doesn't matter what people will say to you. It doesn't matter where the prophet is from and what they're talking. Hey, the blessing is still on you. And there ain't nothing no one can do about it. Because God is blessed and it cannot be reversed. Amen. Amen. God has empowered you to prosper and it cannot. All you have to do is to agree with it. And start walking like it's true. Because it is true. Amen. Let's go now to Romans chapter number 8, verse 44. This concept of generational curses, generational curses are considered to be curses that flow through a family tree. So this, if it was in my life, would have to come through my great-grandfather, my father, my parents, then me, then to my children. But here's a dynamic that they didn't take into account when they were talking about generational curses. The dynamic is that when I became a new believer, my family tree changed. Yes. Oh, that's good. Yep. I was adopted into a new family yes. that is far more superior Amen. than the family, my natural family that I belong to. Amen. So if I'm to inherit anything, it has to come through the lineage of my new family. And in my new family, God, the God of the universe, the one who owns all things, is my father. Amen. So if I'm inheriting from him, I don't think he has any generational curses to pass on. That's right. That's good. I don't think he has any bad habits to pass on. That's right. I don't think the blood of Jesus has any misdemeanors to pass on to me as a generational curse. Yeah. That's good. Amen. good That's it. That's it. Isn't it. Well, if you still believe it, let me show you. Where did I tell you to go? Romans 8 verse 14. Watch what it says. Romans 8 verse 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. How many are led by the Spirit in here this morning? Yep. He's talking about you. He says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? Sons of God. Someone shout, I'm a son. I'm a son. Daughters too, you are sons. You know why? Because in the spirit there is no gender. Womanhood, manhood, it's all the same. As long as you're in the hood. Amen. Yeah. Just get in the hood. He's talking to you. You are a son. And the other reason he called you a son is because daughters don't receive an inheritance. This is why he qualified all of us to be sons, because he so longs for all of us to receive of his inheritance. Amen. Man, this is good. Verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of what? Bondage again to fear. There is no place for fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry what? Father. Man, you can call God Father. Because that's who he is. He is your father. Amen? Amen? Let's go to John chapter number 1 verse 12 as we close. John chapter number 1 verse 12. It says, but to all who did receive him. How many received him this morning? I. He says those who receive him. <laughs> How many believed in his name? Who believed in his name? He gave the right to become children of God. So when you received him, you received the right to become God's child. It's there on your birth certificate. It is there on your ID. Who's your father? God is my father. From the day that I received him. So my lineage changed. So I don't receive of the butais. Man, I had a friend who liked this. This concept of generational curse. He's a good friend of mine. He liked this concept because he had a bad habit. And he wanted to feed his bad. I mean, this dude liked women. He liked them tall. He liked them, you know, short. He liked them light, dark, pink, yellow. He liked all kinds of women. 
You know, and, and, and you would hide behind this concept of generational curses. <laughs> hey, Tavara, I can't help it, man. It's this generational curse thing. My, my great-grandfather liked women, too. And, you know, my grandfather liked women. And my father liked, so, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I got this, gen- but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so every year, you would go and attend this seminar, and they would pray for him, and, you know, you would manifest or whatever, they call it out there, and then you would go back to being the same old man, say, man, this thing came, came back, it came back, as long as I have this surname. No, your surname changed. Amen. Amen. You are now a Christ, Ian, yeah. Amen. better known as Christian. Amen. Your name changed when you received Jesus Christ, and that's your new family. Amen. Amen. He says, to all who received him, John 1, verse 12, to all who received and believed on, him, on his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. First John, chapter number 3, from verse 1 to 2. Oh, man, this is good. Watch what it says in 1 John 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father, the what? The Father. Man, God, the Bible is not a book of uh, a, a, a God and his subjects. It's not a, a book of a king and his subjects. It's not a book of a deity and, and his creation. It is a book of a father and his children. And we are his children. Behold, what manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him. Man, the world cannot understand it. (laughs) They can't figure it out. But we have become the sons of God. Amen. All of us, when we come to God's house, we have the rights of a son. The same rights that Jesus Christ had as a son, did he have an access to an anointing to heal the sick? You also have the same right. Did he have an access to do and perform miracles? You have the same access. You have the same right to everything that belongs to sons. We have a right. We're sons of God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 in the Amplified Bible. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. <laughs> Is this good? Yes. Yes. Therefore, if the president, no. therefore, if the prophet, no. therefore, if the apostle, no. what did he say? Yes. Shout, I'm I'm an any person. (laughs) Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah is a what? New creation. New creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has Let's go to uh, Galatians chapter number 3 from verse 28. Galatians 3 verse 28 to 29. Watch what it says. It says there is now no distinction. Neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is not what? Male nor female. Did you see it? In God's house... There are no sons and daughters. We're all sons. We all have the spirit of sonship. What does that mean? That means we all have the right to the inheritance as a son. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. Next verse. And if you belong to Christ and are in him, who is Abraham's seed, then are you Abraham's offspring and spiritual as a Bible. Hebrews 9, verse 15 to 17. And for this cause, he is the mediator. Who might be he? Jesus, right? He is the mediator of the New Testament. That word mediator is the uh, uh, legal term executor. Executor? 
He is the guy when you, uh, when you write a will before you die, you give it to a lawyer who executes uh, the, the, the disbursement of the estate when you die. <coughs> this dude is called the executor, okay? So Jesus is the executor of the new covenant. Because you don't belong to an old covenant, you belong to a new covenant, which is a better covenant established on what? Better promises. Okay? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Covenants change. You belong to the new covenant. And your covenant is the New Testament. Amen? Well, Pastor T, you know, I, I like to do the whole Bible. I like to do the whole, I know you're talking about this new covenant thing, but I'm, a, I'm an old covenant, new covenant, old covenant. Okay, I have a question for you. When was the last time you took a fattened cow to your pastor to offer as a bent sacrifice annually for your sins? Because it's there in the old covenant. The one without blemish. When did you do that? Well, we don't do that anymore. Why? Because of what Jesus did. Yeah, there are a lot of things that changed because of what Jesus did. And part of it was you were redeemed from the curse of the law. And he put his blessing on you. Now Jesus here is the executor, right? And for this cause, he's the mediator, the executor of the New Testament. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions, that they were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Next verse. For where a testament is, they must also the necessity be the death of the testator. So in other words, we have arised the will. The will cannot be activated until the person who has written the will dies. Yeah. Now, this is a unique situation. Because not only did Jesus write the will and died for it to be activated, he also rose up to execute and make sure that none of his beneficiaries are cheated out of the things that he put in the covenant. Amen. That's amazing. Hmm. Man, that's awesome. He doesn't want you to be cheated out of the things that he has paid for. Because he paid a really big price. Amen. Amen? Four things I'm going to give you before we close. What time is this? Am I out of time? No. <laughs> Man, I'm out of time. Okay. Four things I'm going to give you and then we close. Is that good? Five minutes? Let's try and do this in five minutes. Number one, when you're the process of accessing the will or the covenant is you must first identify the assets or the estate. You must know what it is. In other words, you must know what was paid for and left behind for you. You must know it. And if you want to know who you are, what you are, and what you have, you're going to have to get into scripture and read the Bible between the book of Romans and Jude. It explains who you are in Christ, what you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what God has given you and what you can do. Find out who you are. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. I'm a world overcomer. Amen. Find out who you are. I am a winner. Amen. Amen. That's a winner. I can do everything Amen. through Christ who gives me strength. Find out what the scriptures say and then make a claim for it. Amen. You can't claim what you don't know. Yeah. Number two, you must attend the reading of the will. Here is something that they do when the uh, person who has written the will dies. They advertise in the newspaper and say, hey, we are going to be reading. The, there's going to be the reading of the will for this particular individual. And all the beneficiaries are invited to come to the reading of the will so they can hear what belongs to them. Now, if you don't go to the reading of the will, they are not going to stop the process. They will still read the will. In fact, we have a friend, my wife will tell you, uh, we have a friend, she works as a, as a lawyer who uh, uh, she winds up estates, unclaimed estates. So in other words, there was someone who wrote a will and said, hey, 
uh, uh, Tafara, uh, you must give this house to Tafara. And Tafara didn't go to the reading of the will, and they don't stop reading the will because Tafara didn't come. They will still read the will. So they read the will, and because I wasn't there, I didn't get the knowledge of what was left for me. And because now they are stuck with this house, and Tafara hasn't come to claim it, they hand it over to this lady who's a, a lawyer. She winds up his states. So they take houses that would have cost 10 million and sell them for 2 million because we want to close this case. And if you don't go to the reading of the will to find out who you are and what Jesus Christ has paid for, I don't care how spiritual you are, you cannot make a claim for it. Because yeah. faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing the reading of the will. That's how faith comes. This is why all our meetings are word-based. We are reading the wheel all the time. Amen. You come on Sunday, we read in the wheel. You come on Thursday for a live group, we are reading the wheel. Amen. And we are finding out and we are building our faith for it and we make a claim in faith. Amen. And it comes to pass. Amen. Attend the reading of the wheel. Every Sunday, every Thursday, we read the wheel. And if you go to the reading of the wheel, and you don't understand what they're reading or the language that they're reading in. You still won't be able. You are as good as a person who didn't go to the reading of the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you go to the reading of the wheel and you decide to sleep <laughs> while they're reading the wheel. Hunt your neighbor and check if they are awake. <laughs> You're going to miss where they read your part. Amen? Yeah. And if you do, you won't be able to make a claim for it. Number three, you must identify yourself. They want to know who you are. They said, okay, this house was left for Tafara. I can't just show up from Atlatini and claim I'm Tafara. No, I better have some identity proof. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> Man, you better know who you are. Someone shout, I'm the blessed. I am the blessed. Man, you can't be in between, you know, generational curses. Am yeah. I cursed? Am yeah. I blessed? You, you, know, you don't know who you are. Are you blessed? Someone shout, I am blessed. I that's, am and blessed. that's it. That's, that's it. it. Man, it's like if someone came to you and they said, hey, what's your name? And, you know, you say, my name is Tafara. And they ask you again, what's your name? My name is Tafara. I know, I don't think you're Tafara. What's your name? Most of you in here with a short fuse wouldn't even go that far. <laughs> Dude, I told you, my name is Tafara. And if you don't believe it, deal with it. I'm walking out of here. And yet when the Satan comes and says, are you really the head and not the... Say, ah, am I the head? <laughs> like, am I... Like... You're right. I might not be Tafara after all. He questions your identity and you start switching. You start changing. You must know who you are beyond a shadow of doubt and stick with it. Be convicted about who you are in Christ. I'm a world overcoming, world changer. That's it. Amen. Okay. Let's say people don't like your name. Does it change who you are? No. It doesn't matter what people think. Who you are is who you are. And here's how you identify yourself uh, uh, pertaining the inheritance. Identify yourself with Christ. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's an heir. He's Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. Identify yourself primarily by your positioning in Christ. That's where you are. First, you are in Christ before you are more than conqueror. Because it's always going to say, in Christ. That's your primary location. Yeah. And unfortunately, this is the biggest thing humanity struggles with. Yeah their location. In fact, this was the first question God ever asked mankind. Adam, where are you? Someone shout, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Man, the next time someone calls you and they ask where you are, tell them I'm in Christ in Randbeck. But don't say it. Don't say it out loud. Say it under your breath. Otherwise, you sound spooky. 
Just say, I'm in Christ. Yeah, I'm in Randbeck. <laughs> but primarily, you are in Christ. Amen. That's where you are. Amen. You know what that means? That means you're safe. That means you can't be responding to everything. Yeah, and if someone calls you, I had a dream and you were in an accident, you just continue, man, don't respond. Because if you respond, you're not in faith. I know that you're not responding in faith. You're responding in faith. In fact, you should celebrate. You saw me in an accident. Was I dead? Oh, the Bible says uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So that means I'm going to be in heaven, right? Man, when you're not afraid of death and going to heaven, you can't, you can't be beaten. Because like Paul, you'll be like, man, for me to die, to live is Christ, but to die... Is gain. So guess what? You can't win with a man like that, right? Because if you kill him, he just said, for me to die is gain. <laughs> and to live is Christ. So you, you're actually profiting them. Man, we should move away from fear and start living in the blessing. In fact, if you listen to me pray, 99.9999% of my prayers are not asking God for anything. I'm just thanking him. For what he has already given me. In fact, go to Galatians. Can I do this? One more scripture. Go to Galatians chapter number 4 from verse 1 and 2. And then we close. Galatians chapter number 4 from verse 1 and 2. Uh, number 4, if you are writing down notes for the process of accessing the will, access the will by faith. Access the will of God by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6, He who comes to God must believe that he is and that is a reward of they that diligently seek him. Watch what he says as I close. Now I say that the heir, he's talking about you now, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. So if you don't grow up, see if you are still be below 18 spiritually, if you're still a child, uh, 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 and you're not renewing your mind and getting in the word to grow. You differ nothing from a child. And I remember the one time I came back from work and I saw, you know, my wife and I, when we buy all these uh, little snacks, we buy them for our daughter. So they belong to her. But I came back from work and she was uh, crying, begging, rolling on the floor, throwing tantrums uh, to try and manipulate, you know, um, the person who helps us with, with her, uh, to get something that already belonged to her. I mean, she was throwing a tantrum. And I was like, man, isn't the Bible so true? When you are a child, you're not different from a seven. Because guess what? If she was my age, she wouldn't have cried nothing. Just walk in the house, open the fridge, take what I want and eat it. Yeah. Amen. And then throw away, you know, in the bin, okay? Throw it in the bin. Men, throw it in the bin. Don't just leave it. Don't just leave it where you end. But guess what? Spiritual babies, they'll put together a, a prayer meeting. Let's get together 1,000 people. Let's throw a tantrum. Let's go to God. Let's bombard the gates of heaven. Let's hold God and never let him go until he blesses us. Let us hold him. Let us hold God. Don't let him go until he blesses you. And God is looking at them like, I thought I already, I thought I already bought this for you. Just take it. Just take it, man. Just get the keys and get in the car, put it in the ignition, start and start driving. There's no need for you to throw a tantrum. <laughs> I mean, do you see it with Jesus? You don't see it. With, Jesus walked as a son, man, and I love Jesus' attitude. He was told Lazarus is dead. You don't see Jesus organizing an all-night prayer meeting immediately. Let's organize it. No, he understood I am a son and I have the authority over all circumstances and over life. Amen. Amen. He didn't even pray on his way to Lazarus' grave. He just carried himself as a son because he had read his ID book. That's right. His ID card and he got there and exercised his authority. Lazarus! He didn't even ask for a song to get in the spirit. You know, sing that song that I like so I can get in the spirit. No praise and 
and worship. No song, just walking as a son. Man, we are coming into a season where the church will start walking as sons. I'm talking about the whole church, not individuals, the whole church. Wherever we go, people will be getting healed. We'll be exercising our authority, not the pastors, not the fivefold, not the prophet, the whole church. We have to start walking as sons because we are sons in the house, not servants, not slaves, sons. We have the same right to the power of God that Jesus Christ had. Man, we have to move away from a beggarly mindset. This continent is not the the dark continent of the world. It's the blessed continent of the world. We are not a basket case. We are a blessed people. Man, I was talking to Eric as he was getting ready to leave. I said, hey, Eric, I need to put together some clothes so you can take back to America and give to all those poor people we see on TV. (laughs) He said, what are you talking about? I said, man, we see poor people everywhere living in trailers and getting social grants. We need to, we need to send some clothes to them. He said, man, it's funny because that's how they talk about you back home. I said, man, it's, it's shifting. Amen. We're coming into our own. Now we know who we is Amen. in Christ. Amen. And we are not begging from nobody. We are a blessed continent. We are a blessed people. We are not a basket case. Why don't you stand on your feet? Thank you, Jesus.